Hello, this is Roland. I want to continue reading from A Guide to True Peace Revisited. I'm reading from Chapter 5. When through inadvertency or unfaithfulness we become dissipated, or as it were, uncentered, it is of immediate importance to turn again gently and peacefully inward. And thus we may learn to preserve the spirit and unction of prayer throughout the day. For if the prayer of inward silence were wholly confined to any appointed half hour or hour, we should reap but little fruit. Okay, so let's read it again. When through inadvertency or unfaithfulness we become dissipated, that is, uncentered. It's a very good way of putting it. Surprisingly modern language, but uncentered, because that's what we want to be. We want to be centered, but centered in what? Centered in our true center. See, where are most people centered most of the time? They're centered in their imagination, thinking about what they want to do, what they want to have, where they want to go, thinking what he said, what she said. See, what happened, trying to rearrange the past, or worrying about the future, planning and scheming, trying to get out of, scheming to get out of a mess, or scheming to find a, some solution to some problem that you brought on yourself by being lost in your imagination in the first place. But that's not where you want to be. You want to be centered. Okay? So that you can ob observe thought instead of being lost in the thought. So, Let's continue reading what it says here. It says, It is of utmost importance to turn again gently and peacefully inward. See, let's say you begin the day with, with the proper meditation. The prayer of silence is what they're talking about here. I call it meditation. The prayer of silence. Becoming still. So, in the morning, you get up. You drag yourself to a chair and sit in the chair and meditate for five minutes or so. Basically, closing your eyes, looking at the inside of your eyelids and being aware of your, of your hand or your hands. And when you're sitting there quietly, looking at the inside of your eyelids and being aware of your hand, perhaps a thought will come along to try to carry you away so you notice the thought and you become aware of your hand again and then the thought dissolves another thought of what you want to do those are often very strong in the morning what you want to do what you what you're, what you're going to do so there it is and it's carrying you away maybe for a few seconds or half a minute or so and you notice it and the moment you notice it you become aware of your hand again and now you you, you are no longer lost in the thought. You're observing the th you observe the thought, and usually when you observe the thought, then it dissipates, it dissolves, okay, or it flees. So you see how simple that is, very simple. But now what you have done is you have recentered yourself. You you've committed yourself by going to the chair and sitting still for five minutes. You recommitted, rededicated yourself to wanting to know the truth. See, you don't know, the, you won't know, you don't know the truth when you're lost in that thought that carries you away in a fantasy land. It's a fantasy. It's an illusion. It's a delusion. It's, um, it's like a dream. It's not reality. So you can't know the truth. See, or if you're thinking about the past, what happened, you can't know the truth about that past event either when you're lost in fantasy. So what you need to do is to get out of the fantasy. Then you can know the truth. Perhaps know the truth about the past event, you see? Well, um, so so you see how simple that is. But now you have recentered yourself. Now you can go out, you can get dressed, have breakfast. Now you can get ready for work and go to work or go to school or whatever you're going to do. 
but you carry with you a little bit of this meditative state, this meditative stance, the, a little bit detached, okay? A little bit detached. So now you go out in the world with a little bit of detachment. And, and through that little bit of detachment, two things. Number one, you won't be so carried away. You won't get so carried away. You won't become so immediately emotional and say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing or get excited or get upset with that little bit of detachment. So it, it smooths the bumps in the road. It quiets you. It gives you perspective. The second thing is you'll see the big picture. You'll, get, you'll see the big picture. You know how you know, I was once reading uh, or listening to uh, someone who was talking about anger management. And the person said, if you're talking to someone, then you, you, they're trying to pull you into an argument. And then you sense that they're trying to pull you into the argument. And you may even start starting, be starting to get pulled into the argument. But you notice that. And then you take a mental step back. Okay? Now you see the big picture. You see the big picture. You see why you don't want to get pulled into the argument. You see why arguing is, is pointless. You see why getting angry is pointless. See, And then you do or say the right thing. Maybe you make your point simply and take leave, possibly. Or you remain quiet, but you don't get angry. See? Because you have the big picture. Well, you carry some of that throughout the day. And the third thing, actually, is that because now you're closer to the inner light, instead of lost in the, in the, in the dream world, you're closer to the inner light. And so in the inner light you can see, okay? you can realize, you can discern. Okay? And so that adds another level of, of understanding to, and insight to your life. So there's a lot of wonderful benefits. So that's basically what they're saying here. They're saying you carry a little bit of a, a detachment with you. And they say that, uh, this author says, um, it is of immediate, if you notice that you've become uncentered, dissipated, in other words, pulled out into the world, suddenly you're listening to music and tapping your, tapping your foot and you're lost in the music. You notice that, see? or you're getting excited at something, or you're getting angry at something, or you're watching a, something on television, a ball game or something, and now you're getting all caught up in it. You notice that, see? And you take a step back. The author says here, it is of immediate importance to turn again gently and peacefully inward. And thus, we may learn to preserve the spirit and unction of prayer throughout the day. Well, okay. So, the moment you notice you get, you're getting caught up in a ball game, in a television program, in an argument, in music, or you notice that you're lost in a daydream, the instant that you notice that, immediately you're no longer caught up in it. The, the instant that you notice it, you're back in the present again. Okay? And that's exactly what, the, what this author is talking about. And so, as you go out in the world, you're going to catch yourself getting lost in something, caught up in something. And many times, and each time, you, all you do is just gently notice it. See how simple that is? Gently notice it, and now you're back in the present again. You're back, you're recentered. You're observing what you were caught up in instead of being caught up in it. Okay? But it's very important. It's very simple. It's very important. But you can't do it unless you do the meditation, which this author calls the prayer of stillness or the prayer of silence, becoming still. It says in the Bible, God says through his prophet, he says, be still and know that I am God. See? When, you be st when you are still, it quiets you, it humbles you. It takes you out of the delusions and illusions of grandeur. It takes you out of the illusions and delusions of romance or revenge. It takes you out of worry, which is faithlessness. Ang 
anger and judgment. See, which is judgment and unforgiveness. It take, takes you out of those. But your mind will still try to do those. Those, See? Your senses will pull upon you. Your emotions will pull upon you. Those thoughts will try to sweep you away. There's no need to struggle with them. But when you find yourself getting a little bit caught up in something, a little bit emotional, a little bit lost in something, carried away, lost in a daydream, the moment you notice it, you're back in the present again. So it's very simple, very simple, but you need to practice the med You need to do the meditation every morning so you can carry this out into the world with you, okay? So I think I've, um, I've made a very, very simple point today, but I think it's a very good point. Okay, I keep saying the same thing over and over again in, in different ways with the hope that one of them, you'll, you'll get it. And you'll see, oh, that's why I've been messing up so much. I'm lost in my thinking. And my thoughts carry me away and I'm gone in them and, and excited and upset and anger and angry and worried. And What can I do about it? Well, now you know. You can begin to practice meditation and it'll work for you. It'll help if you're willing to know the truth. See, if you don't want to know the truth, see, th then it won't work. Because when you come, when you step back from that fantasy, from that illusion, from that delusion, from that daydream, from the music you were lost in, or the marijuana, you see, a lot of, a lot of drug taking, drink, alcohol drinking, things like that, um, um, a lot of them have to do with the fact that without them we feel, you feel uneasy, you feel nervous, you feel antsy, you feel uncentered. But why? Well, because you are uncentered, see? And you are, you see? So how are you going to get centered? Well, I just told you. Do the little meditation and get centered. And be willing to know the truth. Even if it should show you that you are not doing so. If it shows you that you're that you're angry at your wife, or it shows you you resent your, your your husband, or it shows that you're impatient with your kids, or it shows that you're wasting money here, or that you're judging secretly judging other people, or you're being phony with you. If it shows you that, then just see it. Don't try to do anything. Just see it. But if you're willing to see it, do you see how you're closer to the truth? But if you reject the truth, what you're rejecting is, is God's light of truth. In God's light, you can see such things. And if you, for the person who doesn't want to see them, to see those things, the person rejects the light of truth and hides in fantasy, daydreams, memories, planning, scheming, hides in emotions, hides in drugs, alcohol. See? Now, the other thing I want to mention was boredom. So, so a little, just I'm just going to add a little special touch, a little extra something that will be good for somebody, I'm quite sure. I'll never forget, a long time ago, when I was in Chicago, I knew a very nice lady, and uh, we were talking about something, and I said, you know, I wonder why people smoke all the time. I said, I think it's because of this. And I gave some philosophical re reason for why they, too many people smoke. She says, that's not it. She says the reason they smoke is because they're bored. Well, you know, there's some truth to that. Yeah, people smoke to 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 get relaxed. Relaxed because they're they haven't been living properly, and that makes them conflicted, and tense, and nervous, and so on. They smoke to avoid conscious. They smoke for the reasons that I just mentioned. Okay, and. Um, and they don't want to know the truth. They don't want to see the truth, face the truth, and so they escape into their smoking. But they are. But it is also boredom. Now, but here's what I wanted to say. This is a little extra touch that I'm giving to you. I'm never bored. See, my my mind is alive with insights. The things I talk about here. That's the way I am all all day long. Insights. I see, I go out in the world and I see, th oh, now I see, I understand, I realize, I see principles, principles of, of forgiveness. Over and over again, I see why forgiveness is so important. OK, 
okay? Or why I see being patient is important. See, having faith, staying close to your conscience, not getting upset, see, being honest. I see those over and over. I see them when people are that are honest or patient or kind, see, or truthful. And I see it when they're not. And then I see how it backfires on them and so on. And so I see all kinds of things. I see scientific principles. See, I, I discover things like that. Just a, a world of, of, of joy, a world of discoveries and insights. See, and, and, and so I'm never bored. Okay? Why? Because I'm a little closer to the light than many of you are. I'm closer to the light, which is the source of those discoveries, the source of those realizations. The source of those delights. See? Closer because I follow my own advice. I meditate. Okay? And I, if I catch myself getting caught up in something, I take a mental step back, and so on. So that's what you need to do. Then you won't be bored. You won't have conflict. You'll have peace of mind. You'll have lots of insights and just make discoveries and many other wonderful benefits. My name is Roland.